the light and the salt. Can you mute the echo? Or do, you, do I have echo? Thank you. Okay. Oh. Regarding today's passage, it says, um, be the salt. Uh, you are the salt of the earth. So regarding you, God is telling you, don't lose your taste. If you're losing taste, there's no hope in the earth. So don't lose your taste. Regarding your family, since you are the salt and you are the light, give the light to the house. Regarding others around you, let them see you. See you and your good works and give glory to the Father. So today's passage is literally talking about you, your family, and others. Now that this is what we are facing in these days uh, as we live, it's my life and my life with the family, my life with others. And what is God telling us in this pandemic situation, in this, um, in this, uh, in this time? What is God telling me regarding you? Don't lose your taste because you are the salt. And give the light to your family and others. Let them see the good works in you. So the. Today, Pastor Zhang says, regarding you as, you, as you don't lose your taste, he says this, Matthew chapter 548, regarding you, be, fer, be perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. So how can we be perfect? Can we be perfect within our own strengths? We cannot. But now Jesus is telling us, be perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. This is His desire. So today, instead of we trying to be perfect, why now we trying to holding on to, why now we start holding on to the covenant, what He desires towards us. So Jesus desires us to be perfect. We're not asking Him, can we make us perfect? He desires us. So this is his desire, His will, that He wants us to be perfect as the Father in heaven. So holding on to the covenant may be the first step for us to follow His desire. So first, this is what He promised us, and this is what He did. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 14, it says, For by a single offering He has perfected for all for all, for all time, those who are being sanctified. So may you believe in this covenant. I cannot make myself perfect, but He has perfected those who are sanctified by one offering for all time. Do you guys believe in Christ? So Christ has perfected us once for all. Verse 18, there is no more, no longer any sacrifice or any offering that is needed for the sin. It is already finished. Amen? Not only that, Philippians chapter 1, 6, regarding your past, doesn't really matter what it is, He has perfected you from yesterday to today, he has perfected. When we are using has PP, it is from yesterday to today, it's been ongoing things, right? So it's been done and it is working that he has perfected you for all time. And regarding your future, Philippians chapter 1, 6, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Even regarding your future, 
He will bring it to completion at the at at the at the day of Jesus Christ. At the day of Jesus Christ, the the one who began a good work will bring at the day of Jesus Christ will bring the completion. So. Regarding your future and past and future, it is Christ who is the answer for the covenant God has given us. I desire you to be perfect as the Father in heaven is perfect. So I will be the way for you to be perfect. So I will give myself as an offering, as a sacrifice. This one single offering has perfected you for all time for those who are sanctified. And me who began my good work in you will bring completion to the day of Jesus Christ. And this is how blessed we are. When everyone's saying we are so cursed, we are in this situation, we don't really know how to live anymore. He says, I have perfected you that I will bring the completion. And we are in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 28. Uh, 29 to 30. We are in his absolute sovereignty. This pandemic and this coronavirus was not out of God's plan. It is in God's plan. So we are in His plan. He said He foreknew for those He foreknew He called, He predestined for those who pre He predestined He called for those He called He justified for those He justified He glorified. So our past and future and present. The problem, whatever we were facing, whatever we will face, whatever we are facing, it's been already dealt in Christ. And it's been already solved. Yesterday, you know, I told you guys, did I tell you guys? I want to prove coronavirus cannot block evangelism. I really wanted to prove that. And I really wanted that since if it is God's plan that God has, what does God want us to really hold on to? You know, what the, you know what's happening? When the salt and the light is dark and the salt is losing its taste, well, that's when disaster come. You should realize this. When Israel, whenever Israel is losing the hold of a mission, hold of evangelism, hold of the kingdom of God, the disaster would come upon them. So Jesus would scatter all the Israel. God would scatter all his people all around the world to bring his name to whole nation. Do we still hold on to ourselves or do we hold on to Christ alone? He wants us. Don't let him scatter us all around the world. Yet we hold on to his covenant and we carry out his desire and make it as our desire too. Don't evangelize unintentionally without your will. Why not put yourself in the stream of the covenant with your will in his covenant. And let it be my covenant. So do not lose your taste. How? Hold on to Christ. Let him be my covenant. Let him be my desire. God, I want to be perfect, but I cannot. So why not can you do that for me? So what is God doing right now? According to Matthew 5, chapter 3 to 8, 3 to 12. Now that this is what he's doing to us. Blessed are the poor in spirit. He's making us very poor in the spirit. Don't you see yourself? And he's making us mourn for they shall be comforted. That he's making us mourn for others, mourn for ourselves, mourn for our family so that we are comforted. And he's making us meek for they shall inherit the earth. We shall inherit the earth. So he's making us meek. Whatever you were building for what? For how long, how many years you were building because of this pandemic, because of this problem, disaster, people now are facing crumbling and destruction every single day. And what God is doing to us is this. He's making you meek. Maybe we were, so ang we were so arrogant. Maybe we thought we can do anything. He's making us humble because that's his desire. And he, make us, he makes us 
hunger and thirst for righteousness. In a time you cannot hope anything in material, when you cannot hope anything in physical life, what do you hope in your life? Don't we hope now, finally, don't we hope, hope, Father God, we hope your kingdom and your righteousness. He's doing it to us. Isn't it great? So he's blessing his, his people every single day. So may you never forget those who he foreknew, he predestined, he called, he justified, he glorified. So we are in absolute sovereignty, God's absolute sovereignty. We can never be outside of his plan. We are always in his absolute plan. So he's making us merciful. He's making us pure in our hearts. He's making us peacemakers. And this is what he's doing for us right now. According to our perfect message, according to the message, the word of God. We're not in disaster. He's completing us in the day, to, in the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't it great? Are we cursed or are we blessed? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed bless those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed the merciful. Blessed the pure in heart. Blessed the peacemakers. Regarding your family. Today, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, it says... Give the light to your family. Pastor John gave us a message in Matthew 6.33. Let Christ be your prayer. Regarding your family, go into your room. Shut the door. Seek the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Now that we all st 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 uh, we all spend our time with our family, most likely, right? We really don't go out anywhere. We most likely to stay with our family, whether you like it or not. You're looking at your mom, looking at your dad. They don't even go to work. You don't even go to school. So you guys are all together all the time. Why do you think God has allowed the time to your families? Is it disaster? Why God allowing you to having a time, such a unique time with the family? You know, although we are, we are family, there really rarely a time we're spending with our family whole day because we're all busy. But finally, God is allowing us to enjoy the blessing of family which Adam and Eve lost. He's restoring everything what we lost before. So God is restoring regarding our family. What does He want? Many times we're saying, because of my mom, I cannot play. I cannot pray. Because of my dad, I am so irritated. Because of my son, we make our family member as, I'm, as my excuse not to pray. But why not make them as a reason for me to pray and go into prayer? So in your room, shut the door, pray regarding your family, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This when. This is when Satan's kingdom is completely destroyed. The one who brings horror to your family. The one who brings division to your family. The one who brings fight to your family. The one who brings destruction to your family. Now it's time for us to break the force of darkness that has been working on our family for so long. Right? This is what I'm doing with my family too. It is our time to give the light to my family. We were so busy to cut up with our own lives, our own business. Although they're my family, we didn't really care. That's what, what Adam and Eve did. You know, when Eve were tempted, Adam was right next to Eve. But why don't you think Adam stopped Eve eating the forbidden fruit? I believe it's because Adam was too busy. With his own life. Although he was right next to Eve. He lost his wife. God is restoring the blessing of family right now at this time. Uh, through this blessed time. 
So be ready as an evangelist to save yourself and to save your family. Really, families are the members to be saved. They're given to you. And make them as a disciple of Christ. Make this as an opportunity for us to save our family. Now, it's not only the United States that stopped, that's shutting down there. It's whole nation that are shutting down. I just read the news. People in New York, you can see the corpse everywhere. They're taking dead body everywhere. So many people are dying. And even in country in Africa, they don't really know how to care about these people who are dead. So you can see easily on the street that people are just dead on the street. In this time, God has given us time to take care of our family. What would you do? Fight the spiritual battle in your family. Really learn how to fight the spiritual battle. It's not your wife, it's not your husband, it's not your son or daughter. It's God's husband, it's God's son, God's children. So learn how to treat God's belonging in your family. You know, most likely in the family, we believe that's my mom, that's my dad, or that's my son, my daughter. Since it's yours, that's why it irritates you the most. Because they don't go the way you want. But if you start to accept they're not mine, but they belong to Christ, they might not go to your way. That's a good news for you. Because once you guys are all going together on your way, you will face destructions. This husband asked me, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to have a good relationship with my wife. And I asked, what's going on? We are so different. That's what he said. So I told him, what a good news. If you guys are the same, you guys would go the same way where you don't even discern whether that's a way of destruction or way of blessing. But now that because you guys are so different, you guys are looking for, you guys are seeking the way of the kingdom. Isn't that great? So in your family, go to your room, find a spot, shut the door, shut your anger, shut your irritation, shut all the fight and pray and seek the kingdom of God. Let the Satan's kingdom crumble before your prayer. That's been promised. Matthew chapter what? 12, 28 to 29. What does it say? If by the Spirit of God, if you cast out the demon, the kingdom of God has come already upon you. If you want to plunder the strong man's house, bind the strong man, so then you'll be able to plunder his house. So bind the strong man in your family. Break all the force of darkness. Don't lose your taste. Give the light to your family. Regarding others around you. Matthew chapter 7, 24. What does it say? Everyone then who hears these words of mine and do and will do them, I mean will uh, and doers and doers them will be like a wise man. Yeah, that's my eyesight. <laughs> I have like minus 10 eyesight. Uh, my glasses is fake, so I can't read it. <laughs> anyway, and do, is that right, doers? Does them, does them will be like a wise man. And why do you think? For others, build your house on the rock. You know why? Verse 25, I didn't ask a... Uh, Andre to write down this, but verse 25, rain will soon come, flood is coming, and what's happening, the wind is blowing, beating you from edge to abs, every aspect of their lives, and now the rain is coming, it's not about rain will come, now the rain is coming, flood is coming, wind is blowing and beating you right now, so may you Build your house on the rock. Why? Because everyone will be swept away. You may be like an ark. So let's look at Genesis chapter 6, verse, verse 8 first. Genesis chapter verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. 
And verse 9, what does it say? I can't read that. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So he found favor in God's eyes. Verse 22. Let's look at verse 22. What does it say? Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. For how long? 400 years. He was building an ark. Why? Because there will be flood coming. And people make fun of you making an ark on the top of the mountain. If you're making an ark, you're not professional in this, but you're just following God's way. You're doing it because God, God desired it. And people might say, that's not your, your professional. You don't even know how to build an ark. So it took more than 100, it took about 100 years to build an ark, and they are surely making fun of you. What are you doing for more than a decade? It's like 100 years. Have some fun. Enjoy your life. But you know what they do not know. We know what others do not know. What do we know? There will be rain, flood, and wind are ready to blow and beat everyone down. They're ready for it. And it is coming right now. It is raining, flooding, and it will be raining this week, whole week. That's what I heard. Flooding and wind blowing. They will see the ark. But if you don't have your ark, if you don't have your house on the rock, it's not only that they're lost, we are lost. We can be one of them. We can't regret anymore. We can't stay in victim mentality anymore. Let others see your salt and your light. And as I told you guys, This is what they're facing. Financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, people are all swept away. They're lost. As a conclusion, I'd like to get a chance to read Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 54. Verse 10. For the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not be depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God has compassion on his people. And now he's saying this. The mountains may depart, hills removed. What does that mean? Your mountain, your hill that you believe that will never be removed is removing right now. It's removed from your sight. Things that you believe will stay forever will be gone in two seconds, three seconds. You are losing everything. Today, even today, I heard one of our church members, he told me his company fired 2,000 people. It's happening all around the world. It's just 2,000 employees, right? Think about their family. 2,000 people have their family. Each one has their own family. How many people can we expect? This is what we are facing. The mountains you believe that will stay forever, the hill you believe that will protect you forever is removed, is departing from your sight. So where should we build our life? His steadfast love and His covenant of peace will never be removed, shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has He's the only one who has true compassion on you. Steadfast, if you, uh, if you write down steadfast in Google, this is what it says. Steadfast means firmly fixed in place, immovable. That's a steadfast love. Immovable love is firmly fixed in you. 
and it is a covenant of peace shall not be removed. Then, what's the contents of the steadfast love? What's the contents of this covenant of peace? Christ. Hebrew chapter 13, Hebrew chapter 13, 8. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Fix your eyes, Hebrew chapter 12, 2. Fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, who's not only the founder of your faith, but also he is the perfecter of your faith. So that's where we focus on now. Not because of coronavirus. Even without coronavirus, our focus will be from now on, Jesus Christ alone. Don't let God allow us another disaster to turn our, turn our, eyes, turn our eyes on Him. Don't let Him do that anymore. He has compassion on us. So it's hurting Him. For us, worshiping something else. But if we cannot stop, He will stop it. How? Allowing us persecution, allowing us problem, allowing us difficulties, allowing us lose hold of whatever we were holding on so firmly. The mountains and the hills are removed. Then what are you going to hold on to? The steadfast love and the covenant of peace, which is Jesus Christ alone. Then what is God telling us regarding our lives, our family, and others? Be ready to save 237 nations. You know, nowadays people can come to church. You should anticipate this. After two, three months, when the government and whole nation start to open up the church door, tens of thousands of people will come back to church. Don't let them hear anything else but the gospel. So guys, be ready to share, be ready to proclaim only the gospel. Bible is not about Jesus. It's only about Jesus. You guys believe in this. It's not about gospel. It's only about the gospel. It's not merely about Christ. It's only about Christ. Don't you know that you are the temple of God, that you are Christ, that Christ is God's? So be ready to face 10,000 people come before you and prepare your family, be the light to your society and whole world. And now that we, may you never lose your taste in Christ Jesus. So we decided with the youth group to have in worship every day 10 a.m. through Zoom. Amen? Whoever watching this. And now we decide to have you know, worship with parents and teachers every day, 7 a.m. Whoever watching this remnants, please tell your parents, mom and dad, you have worship at 7 a.m. Please tell them, okay? And say that and say amen to their face. And within our multi-ethnic groups, I'm planning right now. Maybe since we have seven, worship at 7 and 10 a.m., Within our multi ethnic we might start at 4 a.m. <laughs> That's what Andre desires. <laughs> so we need to think about it. So we are having actually more worship than ever, right? We were used to having a worship three days a week. Now through Zoom, because of this situation, we are having more time to give worship to God every single day. What a blessing for us. We have things to do. Don't lose your taste. Give a light to your family and let them see the light in you, and let them be on your ark so that you could be the one, the evangelist, that's saving this lost generation. Let's have a time of praise. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Holy